Hey everybody, Eric Wingman Peterson, invite you to come into the hangar today for episode 62. This is an inside look at Chris Roberts and the epic space adventure game Star Citizen. A big MMO coming up, coming soon to a PC near you. So what do we got this week? Well, we got an inside look at the asteroid hangar and room system. We have form feedback with your questions and video, and an interview with our very own Mr. Goldshirt himself, Mark Skelton. Let's get to it. Well, what did we do last week? Well, we got to go to GDC. I mean, if you remember, we shot the show a couple weeks ago. So we had GDC last week. That meant myself, Chris Olivier, Sean Barton, um, Chelsea, Melissa, all of us were out at GDC last week interviewing thousands and thousands of candidates. It was really, really fun to get out there. We, we got to meet a lot of talented people. We're probably going to take a few weeks to get through all those resumes. But the one thing that got me going is um, a lot of people had still didn't know about our game. And so they would see the trailers that we had up on the screen and they would look at it and go, holy cow, that's amazing. And so I think we might have actually gotten a few Star Citizen converts out of that and they'll help us spread the word. And we all know more people more victims in the universe for us to kill. What else? Dog fighting. Yep, yep, yep. We are dog fighting. And today, we successfully play tested with the back end hosted on the web. That's right. We're getting there. We've had eight people playing. We've got more than that. And it turned out that the eight person limit was kind of a cry engine thing. We've blown that out of the water now. And now we're expanding it across all the studios and play testing that to get that out to you. You'll get some inside looks at that. I think that we're going to be doing showing some sneak peeks at dogfighting or the people behind dogfighting. And then we've got the big you know, reveal on the 10th up at PAX East. Um, ooh, lots of major strides optimizing network traffic this week. So a lot of things happen on the dogfighting right now. The network is actually pretty stable. It's been there. We've had it going for four weeks. But as we add gameplay elements to it, it breaks it. And then we fix it. And then it breaks it. Then we fix it. And it breaks it. Typical development. We have a lot of new hires. We got Rob Reiniger, senior technical designer in Austin. We've got Julie Ingle King. She's working with John Erskine on the publishing publishing side. First time I've ever attempted to speak English. And we've got Lee Amarcoon, a VFX artist, and he said his job is to blow up. Oops, sorry, maybe that was redacted. In LA, we have James Pugh. He's assistant community manager. You guys met him in the last MVP with Ben Listick. He's helping, and he actually picked the questions for, for questions questions for forum feedback today. So get ready for that. Ooh, another 10 for the chairman was released Monday. Always good to see Chris getting out there. It's fun to check out what he's doing. He's doing a great job answering those questions straight from subscribers. If you want to get direct access to the man himself, become a subscriber, get those questions in. And we had the next great Starship episode 1.8 was released last Friday. We had kind of an inside look at um, the Mustang, what's going on with that, and where are the teams are at this point while we go on the hiatus to give them a chance to, you know, build their ships, get them a little further along the pipeline. So check that out if you haven't seen it on YouTube right now. Well, as we mentioned earlier, we had the asteroid hangar. I think it's time to take a closer look. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Inside Cloud Imperium Games. Uh, this is where we take you behind the scenes to the various studios working on Star Citizen and sort of show you a little more in depth of uh, the technology we're working on, the art, the concepts we're working on, and show you how we're putting together this uh, incredibly ambitious game. Uh, so today we've got a bit of a treat. We're going to go uh, up to, uh, I would like to say, sunny Montreal, but at this time of year it's uh, a bit chilly, uh, where Behaviour is working uh, most, you know, on the planet side uh, aspects of Star Citizen. So I'm going to pass you over to uh, Sandy, who is up in Montreal right now, and uh, she'll tell you more about it. Salut, je suis Sandy. Je suis présentement à Montréal, chez Behavior, pour rencontrer l'équipe qui travaille sur l'Asteroid Hangar. Dave Richard, lead game designer. Stefan Horvath, level designer. Philip Ivanovich, tech lead artist. Corentin Chevan, art director. Stefan Beauchamp, lead programmer. Guys, you brought some cold weather for me <laughs> this morning. Oh my gosh, walking here was freezing. So is this exciting for you guys? I and mean, it's a different project from what you guys have been working on before. Yeah, it's incredible. Yes. We're creating a whole universe, which is in a way super cool, in a way super worrisome in terms that we need to create a lot of assets to actually create those, uh, those living worlds. The main focus right now is what we are calling the room system. And the room system is going to be the foundation of 
all the uh, locations on the d different planets you can land and it will also be used on even bigger ships or space stations. Uh, at Behavior, we've been tasked with uh, the goal of creating the room system, which basically consists of uh, an easy way for our designers and artists to create various um, assets and to be able to reuse them throughout either the hangar, planetside locations, or uh, even spaceships for such. What's great about the room system is that we'll be able to expand it not only to hangars but also to planet side. So we'll be able to create dynamic location like shops that uh, change on the fly based on the economy. Even though CryEngine is a really powerful engine, uh, Star Citizen has been pushing its content creation pipeline to its limits, requiring us to add new systems to help us remix and reuse our uh, modular assets. To do that, we've been using uh, a, a system called the Seed System, which allows designers to create basically a group of objects, but be able to change a subset of these objects easily without having to recreate basically copies all over the world of these objects. It's really cool uh, with the prefabs that um, we can start with something that's very gray box, um, that has no texture, uh, that just uh, gives the idea of a shape. And um, with the prefabs, all Phil would need to do is go into uh, the engine and replace um, those shapes uh, with the shapes that he would like. So this core tech is going to be used for the hangars and then also other areas like shops or bars or other locations on the uh, planetside locations and the other bigger sort of spaceship locations. So it's a completely new tech that we're building from the ground up. And the first application of the room system is the asteroid hangar, which is uh, the hangar for the people that uh, don't really want to be in the sort of, the uh, I would say, the safer areas of space or the more legitimate areas of space. So the asteroid hangar. What is the asteroid hangar? So it's a, it's a hangar that will be found on some of the Eero location uh, that we're building. So uh, mostly lawless space. Uh, they're, they're built so that they, they're really small and they feel like you can, you can hide there, basically, as a pirate or not. So the la, la first thing we've done here, before we even started to do concepts, is uh, to block the things uh, in 3D juste pour avoir une bonne idée de la taille des pièces puis comment elles allaient s'imbriquer les unes par rapport aux autres. I'm, I'm pretty sure like Caterpillar and Constellation are currently the, the biggest we can fit. Yeah. Um, but then there's still, you know, much bigger ships out there. So it's also something that we need, needed to think about when uh, designing the, the expansion. So at some point when the player will be able to, you know, expand uh, he will be able to choose the type of room he needs for the type of ships he want to uh, fit in. We have to keep going back and forth because the size of the caterpillar is quite large as he's mentioned and we have to take into account extra size on each side of the caterpillar as it takes off. Um, maybe not necessarily um, every takeoff would be smooth so your ship might move side to side and we wanted to avoid uh, making the player go through this tiny rabbit hole um, and crash inside his hangar or something. Yeah, we, we kind of don't want the player to die in his own hangar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Um, so the first step was to block out a general idea of what sizes we wanted. So we wanted to have like a stock hangar where you'd start and you'd have your first ship. Um, and then we'd add on as an extensions the larger pieces as they continue on. And as they follow the contour of the asteroid hangar, um, we wanted to have something that, that really did feel organic in terms of uh, and, and like biological when you look at uh, the asteroid hangar itself and where it comes from and, and, and how it was placed. So it didn't just feel like it just appeared there. With this all in mind, we wanted to keep uh, the idea that we wanted to add on like room extensions, uh, hangar customization to, to the max to allow the players to really make this feel like uh, their own uh, home, like housing for their ship. That's essentially what that is. So when you look at the asteroid hangar now, in terms of this, this is the stock hangar where we wanted to have, as you see here, a cutlass. You have uh, your command center and you have a, 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 the, the ceiling door, which would actually open up and you'd basically fly in from outside your asteroid hangar. You'd fly through it and then you'd land inside this asteroid hangar. We want to make this as cool as possible for everybody that, that's involved. From this point, you're going to be able to, to, to expand yourself. You're going to go up to these nubs and um, basically use your Moby glass and you're going to allow it to um, make a new uh, expansion. So you're going to add on a new ship, 
a new section. What that will also uh, allow would be a new room expansion, which I'm talking about specialty rooms specifically. So um, what you've seen so far is a shooting range and um, a, a course, I guess, a trick course, where you can use the buggy and you can jump through hoops and whatnot. So when you go in your hangar, you will find some uh, special spots. So basically at that point, just like with the ships, but for your hangar. And using the Mobi Glass, you'll be able to access the hangar service. And in augmented reality, you'll be able to access that point, uh, look for the rooms you want to add, buy it, install it, and then there's going to be a construction time. So you can get out at this point, go with your ship in space, and at some point you'll get a notice on your Mobi Glass saying, hey, your hangar space is ready. And then you'll be able to go in and, and check your new space out. When we speak about asteroid, we obviously invoke the idea of rocks. And for the rocks, we did a lot of research because we we had to find the perfect balance in between simplicity and complexity. The rocks need to read well and needs to uh, have a nice silhouette. Pour unifier tout euh, tout ce côté organique et naturel des des, des roches avec euh, tout le côté euh, plateforme très rectiligne, métallique euh, qui a été fait par par les humains. On, a, on est venu briser un petit peu le, le, le côté euh, des structures manufacturées avec euh, des plaques de travers, des câbles, des flaques d'huile et tout ça pour donner quelque chose de plus organique pour tout le côté euh, fait par l'homme et tout le côté euh, rocailleux dans le fond on a essayé de le, le rendre un petit peu plus rigide euh, pour baisser justement ce contraste entre ces deux, euh, ces deux parties importantes du, de, de l'astéroïde hangar. So for the uh, control room, you can see that it's a bit messy, cluster. We wanted that feeling of uh, real anger, like uh, people are working, so it, there's oil, there's wires, it's messy and steams. Almost feel like a garage. So we should be ready like yesterday, right? All done. <laughs> <laughs> I should get my caterpillar into the hangar and away we go. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that sneak peek at the room system in the asteroid hangar and we'll catch you next week at Inside Cloud Imperium Games. And the asteroid hangar will come if you own a cutlass, so if you don't have one of those, you might want to think about getting it. By the way, it's Sean Murphy, not Sean Barton. Sean Barton's somebody I worked with at another company in another life. Sorry, Sean Murphy. Uh, oh, this. what else happened this last week? We had some fans drop by the office. Take a look at this. They brought in some barbecue, they brought in some beer, we got to give them a tour of the office. There's about 10 of them. We got to meet, always good to meet some of the fans having a good time. And they got to show, one of the guys came all the way from Germany, it was his birthday, we sang him happy birthday. And of course, we managed to take a photo. And now it's time for Forum Feedback. There it is, Forum Feedback, how you doing Rob? I'm doing great, how are you doing? I'm doing good, I'm good, shall we uh, just get right to, I hear we have some interesting names picked out for me this week. There are a couple that you might have some issues with. <laughs> Not today, Irving. <laughs> I saw your intro. <laughs> <laughs> From Blackstone Zara, do we have a place to combat cheaters in the Persistent Universe? Or do we have a team in place to combat cheaters? A team in place. Uh, um, we, it's something we're discussing uh, right now at launch. We, we don't really need to worry about that as much. But uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely something that is on the long range roadmap and close to the Persistent Universe. But we're aware of it and we're, we're very concerned. And again, a lot of these things are going to be worked out. That's why we're doing the dogfighting module, and they can help us help us discover those. And uh, not saying we want you to cheat, but no. you know, no, no, we'll no. help discover those cheaters, and you know, we'll make do what we have to do. From Captain Bosch, what kind of controller support are we going to have in Dogfight Module Version One? Will it be full HOTUS and rudder pedal support? Will you be creating custom profiles for popular HOTUS setups like the X52? Mm. So we're starting out with, with HOTUS support. Good, um, good. Not necessarily every package up right. front, but we'll, and we'll be adding over time. But we'll, we'll have some profiles set up, I'm sure, and we'll let users customize them as well. So. Cool. Well, there you go. That's pretty cool. From Flukes, can you please elaborate on what you mean by private servers? Will people with supercomputers be able to host their own persistent universe, or, or will it only end up being something like a dogfighting module server? Hmm. Supercomputers, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we have a big rigs, but I'm not sure about supercomputers. <laughs> How many of you guys have a cray? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we play a game? <laughs> so it's it's more freelancer style. It's right. you set up your own mini persistent universe with a smaller player set. Right. It's not not the same scale, but yeah, we don't we don't want them out there <coughs> competing with us. We want the big universe to be uh, home with us, so everybody else gets there. So 
Cool. Uh, from Globokiller. Globokilla. I almost got through that this. Pretty That's good. pretty good. Globokiller. Okay. How will an aspiring bounty hunter be able to track player characters with bounties on their heads? Will we encounter our targets by chance, or will there be some mechanic that will help us find our mark? B. So th there is there is a thing called the, the person of interest system that we are working on um, that will enable you to actually hunt people down rather than just you know bumping into them accidentally at the mall. So Star Citizens Most Wanted, <laughs> coming near a person of interest service to you. From oh from Hearts Blade, a video question. Take it away. Hey Wingman, Hearts Blade here. I have a two part question regarding the adventure. In a recent jump point. Chris Roberts and Nathan Dearsley commented on the ability of the Avenger's wings to fold while it's on the ground. They also discussed the possibility of the single-seat Avenger having a folding jump seat behind the pilot. Can you tell me if either of these design features are still in the works for the Avenger? So that was a pretty cool video, and it was about Star Citizen. Well done, and well executed. So those are the kind of videos we're looking for. So what do you think? Short and to the point. Um, so what you see in Jump Point and part of the reason for Jump Point is you get to see what happens, the work in progress, that you're seeing the designing of a ship. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these notes that you see at the beginning are the ideas that come out during that process. Right. But at the end, what the artist builds may change along the way and as, as further feedback happens. What you see at the end, though, is the finished, approved version of the ship. But perhaps there's always room for variance. So who knows what's going to happen there. But I mean, that is a good point. And, and that is another, let's reiterate that again, other than the crazy zany variance thing I just did. The point is, we're showing them the process of how these things get designed. And we throw a lot of spaghetti against the wall, and most of it falls off. But the one that, that Chris gets at the end is what we really want to be on. So, um, oh, wow. From Fuck You. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, if the main Squadron 42 story will be released in episodic content, what does that mean for the player in between episodes? Will the character receive citizenship and leave the military after the first episode? And if not, how will it be handled if the character is still enlisted? Well, um, Squadron 42 is, is going to finish before the Persistent Universe goes. Right. Out. So basically the reason we're pushing out episodes is so we can get content to you people as quickly as possible. But yeah, you, that, that won't be a problem. Right, and that, that's really good. So, um, And I'm looking forward to some of the stuff they're working on with Haddock and Schimmel and Aaron and those guys in, in the UK. Are, it's going to be team. super fun. It's an awesome team. It is, it is a really good team. It's going to be fun for everybody to play. From Sir Malachi, will there be a criminal code for the whole universe, or does every system have its own laws? Hmm. Well, in, in the UEE, I mean... That there's one rule set. I mean, right. it's, it's a unified government. So it's kind of like the world, isn't it? Yeah, the United States has one set of rules. Germany has a little variations of. And sure. So like the, the Xi'an might have different rule sets. and it might have. Of, well, will. <laughs> yeah. And then there, there may be locations where they have their own local rules to add on top of that. But if right. the UE's after you, the rules are consistent. So if there's some area that's the border worlds and there's some zany people ahead of it, they'll have their own rules to... to uh, yeah, there might be some wackos out that's there. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. From Karun, if I land on a planet and get out of my ship to explore some ruins, is it possible for someone to ha hack the lock on my ship and steal it? And you, can you lose your ship? A little Slim Jim. Yeah, right. <laughs> Slim Jim the lock open. We need videos of that right away. Yeah. Um, so no, we're not going right. to let people steal ships in that way. Yeah, planets, we've, we've talked about this before. Planet side is a safe environment. It's a yeah. place to go down to get right. missions, to meet people, to yeah, talk. To hang out, it's it's yeah, it's a relative relative. Most planet side environments are a safe environment. That's a good that's a good catch. You're right, you're right. From Chompers, he says, "Will our character need to eat, sleep, use the toilet, and if not, why? <laughs> why why don't I have to use the toilet, Rob?" Uh, that sounds like a personal question. Yeah, that me, is not a good but, question. But, um, the but the point is, come on. Yeah, no, Are I, we I mean, force players to use the toilet. Uh, uh, let's be honest. Yeah, it's not fun. That's that's just not fun. To so have we're to making do that a game, stuff. is what you're it's saying. It's like they never stop and use the bathroom on 24, and there's a reason for that because it's not interesting. Right. So if you want to use those things, we have those in the game for immersion's sake. If you really want to interact with your ship, but we're not going to force you to do that. Right. It's interactive environments. It's things for people to do for fun. And but you're right. It's that's that's not uh, not something that gameplay-wise that is crucial. Um, so good, good answer. So. 
Well, I want to thank you for joining us this week. It was a fairly quick and responsive forum feedback. And now it's time for Ben Lisnick with this week's, this week's, this week's English lesson in Most Valuable Post. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to MVP, Most Valuable Host. I'm Community Manager Ben Lesnick. And I'm Lead Moderator Will. Well, welcome back. Uh, all right, Will, what do we have for them this week? This week, our MVP is Cynic, and he has created scenario threads where he asks users, what would you do in specific situations? Such as coming out of a jump point and seeing a pirate ship just sitting there. It's pretty cool to see what everybody's come up with and what their answers are. Yeah, reading, I read this thread, it, it just reminds me of playing Zork when I was a kid, and just, thank God for high-powered graphics cards. <laughs> I don't, you are sitting on a Constellations bridge. There is a bejeweled egg. I, <laughs> I don't know what we do, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a great thread, and it's, it's a lot of fun if you guys want to join in over there. Yep. See you next time. And this week's fan focus goes out to Mr. Phelps. He decided to take a look at some glorious old movie posters and put them into the Star Citizen universe. Things like Chris Roberts in Dogfight Afternoon and Sandy and Louise, the 20th anniversary edition, Driving Miss Daisy, Avengers Assemble, The Big Les Nicky, Nisky, that's hilarious, and then Sadoval and Prepare for Glory 300i, that's hilarious, and of course, my personal favorite, Saving Private Ryan. Good job, Mr. Phelps. You're this week's fan focus. So why do psychics have to ask you your name? <laughs> I've often wondered that myself. <laughs> What's up, Ederson? Uh, it's Parrick Ederson to you, sir. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. How how's are you? It? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we go any further, mm -hmm. how's that wingman's weight going? We haven't talked about it in a while. No, um, no, Wingman's weight is going. Is it? Yeah, it's steady it's, incline. Well, it's going one direction. Uh, yeah, <laughs> mine is mine is as well. So yeah. you don't have to feel bad yeah, about it. Yeah, don't worry. We're we're gonna we're gonna get back on that later. But thank you so much for bringing that up. Hey, no problem, man. I uh, the fans that, wanted yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot for that. Sure. So look, we we did a bit today on the creating of the asteroid hangar in the room system. Now we you, did. You're intimately involved in that, and uh, I am. Yep. So, how does that work? What is what is going on with that? How do you manage studios that are no, no longer around us? Or? So, we work with the Behavior Guys, which mm -hmm. those are the guys up in Montreal. Love those guys, and I want to officially say that I'm sorry for butchering every single one of those guys' names. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like, uh, what was his name? It's Corentin, but it's Corinthian, you know, yeah, I, yeah. and I, every time, I'm sure they hate me, because yeah. every, every time I blow I can confirm it, that, by the way. Every time I blow that, and Matt, Matthew. 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 Yeah, you gotta get the, and e I, I butcher it every time, and I'm, I'm gonna formally say I'm sorry for that. Cool. Um, anyway, those guys are really talented, man. I agree. Um, we have, usually we have Skype meetings with them, twice a week, mm -hmm. um, which you know, because you, you sit in but on But I'm pretending not to. Yeah, well, you sit in it's on acting. you know how good they are. Yep. Um, so usually what we do is we'll, especially with like the asteroid hangar, which is what we're currently working mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. um, we'll do, it's, it's usually about an hour meeting-ish, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes more, maybe sometimes less, depending on what we're doing. But um, we usually do a, like a full walkthrough of it with them um, and just, you know, point out things that could conceivably be better about it, um, maybe things to consider in the future, like when they're working on stuff. Currently, it's just, it's kind of a, what we call a gray box stage, mm -hmm. which that is like, uh, there's a white box stage, which is like straight white boxes, right. you know, and that's just for mostly design. Block out. So, kind of. so design can like figure out like the uh, pathing and they figure out like, okay, if it's going to be, if there's going to be like, a uh, firefight in here, then where's the cover, you know, what's the cleanest way to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. And then after that it goes on to a gray box, um, which the gray box is actually, it gets a little more detailed, right. the um, boxes become, um, you know, higher detailed, higher resolution um, for the model, and then they start putting textures on. So I think even, actually I think they're a little farther than that, yeah, they actually yeah, have quite. textures on them. Yeah. And um, they're starting to kind of light while they res things up. So it's right. really cool, man. I, 
it's been a great process with those guys because they're talented. So it's always like every time I see it, it's just like whoa. That is fun part of our job is getting to yeah. see stuff because every time there's like further iteration, it looks even better. So they're doing the room system and the mm -hmm. seed system or whatever. And so what what how are we going to use the room system? And I think Rob, you'll be using a lot of it as well. Mm -hmm. But how are we planning to use it and why is it important? So the asteroid hangar is actually their kind of test bed for right. the for the. Uh, room system. Now the room system, what that's going to do, which is really cool, it's going to allow um, the user to add on different rooms uh, and be able to place things in those rooms um, and fill them up kind of as they will, you know, with, uh, as you guys know, you know, there's already, we have, um, you know, like posters and, you know, fish tanks. flare, fish flare tank. stuff that we, that we put out there. And obviously if we just keep <laughs> shoving them in these hangers, it's going to be like <laughs> Sanford and Sons pretty soon. You know, it's getting a little crazy. It looked like a Christmas yard with all the plastic stuff everywhere. Right. So what we decided what would be good is if, you know, you have uh, rooms that, that show up off of your main right. hangar, like, a, you know, like a like a, a, a dude cave. It's your, it's your apartment. Oh, or, yeah, and, or a uh, trophy room. Or a trophy or room. or a business. And it's not just that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to add later as far as, you know, different functionality and usability for these rooms, but um, I mean, one of the big things is like, where are you going to store your crap? And that's a good place yeah. right there. <laughs> well, that's Fire Range will eventually Fire move. Range will Fire move back Range there. Yeah, right that's going to so. be moved. So all that stuff is going to be, you know, kind of compartmentalized where you can, you know, you don't have it all in one big hangar. You can move from room to room and expand on your rooms and be able to put Personalize stuff it. I mean, yeah. it's a big deal. People like to personalize their stuff. And so I think it's, it's going to look I think it's going to be awesome. It is going to look sure, good. We're going to have the bathroom in there. The bathroom, of course. Well, of course. But we're going to be building <laughs> this gonna out. We're going to put your crap. We're going to put you are going to put your crap. <laughs> oh man. Yes, exactly. indeed. Oh yeah. Anyway, we're professionals so, here. <laughs> outside of where you're going to put your crap. What do you do at CIG? Folks want to know what an art director of what do you do? God, I wonder that every day. What do I do? So Me do too. I. Um, I know. I know you do. Why do I give this man a paycheck? Um, I handle a lot of different things, actually. Um, I put out fires, I, uh, I manage the internal art team, so right. I walk around desk to desk and see what they're doing and give them art feedback. Um, a lot of the things, like you saw, um, I think it was in, um, it was in the hangar last week, I think, was what I do is I will take concept and then I will um, analyze it and then have it built. And then while it's being built, um, I kind of, I'll retool it, you know, and make sure that it fits within a 3D world. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of times that, you know, you've got really talented concept guys, but unfortunately, you know, when you start breaking it down and putting it in the real world, you know, sometimes things just don't work. And right. that's one of the things that an art director does is make sure that that stuff works real time uh, in a real world and make sure it's coherent. So, Cool, and I know you're busy. I know we've got a lot going on right now art-wise. Not busy, not at all. I don't know what no, you're talking no. about. <laughs> so speaking of that, right? Yes. Have you ever been on a more ambitious project than this? Absolutely, positively not. Yeah, me either. I mean, it is absolutely the most ambitious, the most like um, full steam ahead, vision, let's do this you know, just point and shoot project I've ever been on. And it's just been a crazy roller coaster ride of insanity. And it's, it's, it's awesome. awesome. It's I know. Awesome. It's, it's, awesome. Awesome. it's It's like, it, it is. It's just hold on and, you know, try not to fall out of the roller coaster. You're hanging exactly. on the back of the roller coaster. Yeah. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty intense. And it's, right. uh, we've been able to, to acquire a lot of good talent to help us make this happen and starts with Chris. So it's, it's been pretty crazy. And I yeah, know. it's, it's cool because, man, you, we have definitely got a, a vision, you know what I mean? There is, he knows what he wants, he knows where he's going, and we are just along for the ride, man, yep. and making it happen. We're making so. it happen, exactly, exactly. So you are on the next great starship. I and, am? Yeah, and you're there with uh, you know, know some guys. You got Chris there, you got yeah. Sandy, mm -hmm. you've got uh, Hobbins from you the LA office. You got my shirt. I see the shirt. Got that. You got Chris Olivier, Awful Chris shirt. Smith, and you from the Austin office. Yeah. So, you know, they they look good. And so what what's what's going on with the gold shirt here? What's not going on with the gold shirt? That's <laughs> no. what I want. I think everything's going on with the gold shirt, man. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. 
Rob, you want to attest to the smell? Oh. Give, that thing, <laughs> give that thing a whiff. <laughs> give it away. Give it a whiff. <laughs> you want me to get you in a headlock? I'll get you in a headlock. No. Oh, so, definitely. But that is like a trademark now. And fans have actually, like, they're, they're voting on what to do with it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a whole forum thread now. Um, I think... A lot of people want it maybe burned at the uh, yeah. last episode, which I'm uh, voting for that I now. I might do that. I don't know. Or maybe uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, like put it up for auction, maybe for a charity or something. That's not a bad which idea. might be cool. The wingman's hanging uh, charity. By charity, I mean me. No, no I won't do that. that would charitable be terrible. skeleton. Yeah, that would be terrible. I wouldn't do that. Um, other things, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things. They, uh, maybe uh, people were talking about maybe gave, giving it away at PAX. Maybe. I, Ooh, I think it'd be too early to give away yeah, packs because you're still gonna need it. the next great That's starship goes, in, it. goes a little ways longer here. That is true. Now, so. you've been, you have to admit, I, and I've been kind of shocked by this, uh, the teams, there's some talent out there oh making God. some stuff. It is so impressive. Especially I mean, while they, it's impressive how they're taking feedback from us because, um, so we uh, have Shotgun, which is our, you know, sure. kind of internal feedback, visual forum, uh, and they're hooked into Shotgun. So I see their progress like from day to day, and oh my gosh, man, it is mind-blowing, like some of the stuff. I mean, you guys will be super impressed. Like the, just from like what it was, a, you know, three days ago until like now, it's just, it's like, man, they're taking all of our feedback and taking it to heart and really like working hard on it. So, so for them, it's a passion project. And it, it is. It fits right into what we're doing here. Everybody on our team, it's a passion project. Yeah, it's great, man. So I'm not going to ask your favorites because I don't want to skew the competition. Mm -hmm. But I know that... Um, I, I do been, have favorites. I'm, I won't sure, say what they are. I'm sure. I'm sure you do. But, uh, I do too. Who doesn't, right? Right. And it's, we've got, what, 12 left right now in the competition? I believe so. Because two so. got put back in, right? Right. Right. The fans saved them. Good, good, good. That's and true. Were you happy with the fans' choices? Yes. I was because I got kind of overruled on a few things. But that's, <laughs> that's okay. That's you why. Can, that's yeah. why there's five of us. You know. That's why it, we disagree a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. about things, and that's cool. Right. So right. It's no big deal. So, but I'll, let's just say maybe one that I really liked when maybe got put back in. Got put back in. Yeah. Well, so sweet. We're okay. You didn't. Okay. You didn't go home and like vote a thousand times. Maybe. Right? Maybe. Maybe you did. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate that. Thanks, Mark and Rob, for joining us. And You're welcome. want to thank subscribers and pledgers for uh, allowing us to do this show, and we really appreciate that. Next week, we have the Turbulent team. We're going to do an update on organizations. Uh, the next great starship, by the way, which Mark was in and is still in, is, is going on a hiatus to give teams a little chance to get their concepts and ships a little further down the pipeline. So look for features in place giving uh, coming up from dogfighting about who's behind it, what's going on with it, to kind of replace that uh, time slot on Fridays for the next great starship. And we have PAX East and the dogfighting reveal, reveal coming up April 10th. Going to be a good time. If you're not going there, you should go because it's going to be fun. Um, we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is where you get information. You find out when we post a video, you'll get an email right away. You'll know exactly what's going on. Sub quick, submit your questions. My God, I'm fumbling all over my what language. What the man. heck is going on? I don't on know over it, here. man. Submit your questions on Stop the RSI. Chewing on your tongue. I don't know. My tongue tastes like a tongue. <laughs> so get your questions in on the RSI forums, and uh, we'll be able to answer them. You always look forward every Monday or Tuesday, or Thursday or Friday, or sometimes Wednesday, and get those questions in there what any day the? of the week. Just look. And if my you uh, brain. come, come join Wingman's Hangover 15 minutes after this show. And I'll, I should be able to speak by then. I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. It just joins a little inside <laughs> kind of... too much hookah. Yeah, too much happened. hookah. Sort of an inside kind of informal, <laughs> shocking, uh, talk with each other, Skype channels, things like that on the chat roll on RSI forums, 15 minutes after the show. And remember, if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hangar, send it in. We just might use it. Where are we going to see them, guys? In, in the, the verse! verse.